Alright, we, we are now learning about the makeup of a Jew and how a Jew is a small world. Every Jew is a small world. Everything that there is in the world is inside of every Jew. Did you know that? Yes. And therefore, everything that a Jew does has an effect on the whole entire world. And just as the Jewish people are supposed to be a connector to between the creator of the world and the whole world, so that everyone in the world will know that there's a creator that creates them constantly and that loves them, that cares for them. That's in a big way. So we have God and we have the Jews and we have the world. <clears throat> That's why the Jews are the chosen people. We're chosen to tell the non-Jews how much God loves them, cares for them, creates them, provides for them. Zanum farnes the call, metiv the call. That's our job. <clears throat> to let the whole world know this. And that every deed is very important and every good deed has a good effect. Well, before that, though, every Jew is a small world. So every Jew has inside of himself God, <clears throat> the, you want to call it the Jewish part, the Jew and the world. God is what's called the godly soul. If you want to call it the Jewish part, that's called the intellectual soul. And the natural soul, the animal soul. The animal soul is a natural, healthy human being that up to now all psychiatry and all psychology and all this is just working to achieve in a person. That a person should be free of worries and anxieties and neuroses and psychoses and hang-ups and inferiority complexes and things like that. And to just be normal. That's called the animal soul or the natural soul. Every Jew has that. That's something like all of the non-Jews in the world. That's the counterpart inside of each Jew. Then every Jew has what's called a godly soul. The godly soul, that's the godly part of a Jew. It feels God all the time. Most of the time, 99% were not aware of it. <clears throat> Some Jews are never aware of it. Even religious Jews are aware of it once in a while. Sometimes you really pray, you think about on the Yom Kippur, you go by the Rebbe to get a dollar. Some, you feel suddenly, Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm a creation. I'm just really lucky to be alive, to be here. I have a purpose in the world. Huh? Rebbe gives out dollars on Yom Kippur? No, I say you, one example is praying. Another example is you want Yom Kippur. Another example is going by the Rebbe for dollars. Yes. <clears throat> so now the Rebbe is explaining the central, this middle part, which is the part of the Jew that takes from the godly feeling, godly sense, that he senses and feels, he's just, I'm just being created by God, and God is good, and God gives me a purpose, and I'm here for a reason. And the natural part, which feels, I'm just here. I'm just here I am. You know, I'm here today, gone tomorrow, and just, you know, just do what I want. It's me against the world. And then there's the central, the, the, this middle part, the connecting part, which is called the intellectual soul. The intellectual soul is the part of the Jew that is able to connect from the godly soul to the animal soul. Or in, or in simple language, the intellectual soul is what connects between the certainty feeling that there's a creator that's creating me for a reason and the natural part of me which feels that I exist and nothing else exists or everything else is secondary existence to me <clears throat> and the middle feeling that's the intellectual soul that I can decide I can decide I can make decisions when it comes to eating a piece of cake, do I say, does it taste good? Is that the, my main concern? Or do I say, is it kosher? Is that my main concern? Right? And then after it's kosher, I think, does it taste good? What's funny? Oh, someone would say, does it taste good? That would be the godly soul. I'm going to eat it anyway. <laughs> that was just something that was No, 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 no. No, no. Yeah, that's... <coughs> yeah, no, no, no. The, God, the godly soul feel, listen, has to be educated. A person has to be educated. A person can think, it says in the Talmud, 
It really doesn't say in the Talmud. It says in in, in Ayn Yaakov in, in the Gemara of uh, Brachot <coughs> that a thief, before he goes to steal, he prays to God for success. So if he's a thief, then it means he doesn't believe in God. I mean, he's stealing. So what is he praying to God for success for? So the, the, the simple explanation that's given is, is that in a general way he believes in God. In a general way he believes in God. But he doesn't have sufficient belief in God to believe that God will really provide his needs. Or maybe to monitor his needs a little bit. So he doesn't really need all these things that only stealing can bring him. So he believes in God. He believes in God, and he believes God will give him success. I, but he's stealing, it's, a for, it's forbidden, and making somebody else feel bad, losing his money, that, that he doesn't think about. That he doesn't feel about. But there's another explanation. <clears throat> My explanation. <laughs> that I made up. What is the explanation? The explanation is, the Jewish thief, he knows that God creates him. And he feels a Hasidic thief. And he knows God creates him, and he believes that God creates him. And he feels that God creates him. Feels that God creates him. And he knows that being a thief is because God made him a thief. God created him a thief. I, if he really believed in God, he would resist this feeling. Like Maimonides says, everybody is born with natural traits that are destructive, self-destructive. <clears throat> and a person has to fight against these natural traits. Some people are jealous, some people are lazy, some people are angry, some people have lust, some people have this. And you have to fight again. But he doesn't take it that way. He says everything comes from God. <clears throat> this ability to be a thief comes from God. Not everybody can be a thief. Not easy. You have to be brave. You have to be quick. You have to do this. And, and he says, I don't want to let God down. I'm going to be a good thief. So he prays to God that he should be a good thief. That is thief. In other words, you can believe in God and you can believe in the oneness of God. And with that belief, you can excuse anything. You can excuse anything in the world. There were people that did that, unfortunately. There were people, famous people, they became famous in Judaism. They, 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 you know, Yeroven ben Nevat and Shabbat Tzvi and these other people, they'd be chet of machtiat rabim, he says. But they believed in God. They believed in God and everything they did was according to God, according to Kabbalah, according to this. But they just, some way, twisted the thing around a little bit. So the intellectual soul has to be has to be guarded very carefully. There's a beautiful mimer from the Rebbe that said sometimes the bris mila. It's a pasuk in Tehillim. And he likens over there, he says, the intellectual soul of the Jew <coughs> has to have a, a roof over it. You have to be very, very careful. Because the intellectual uh, soul of a Jew can go berserk. It can, it can understand God. and it can, We talked about this before. The professors in, in Kabbalah that didn't keep any Torah and mitzvahs. And, and, and. So that's the intro. Here the Rebbe doesn't say the, uh, the, the downside. Here he's only talking about the upside. So we have in every Jew, there's what's called a godly urge, a godly certainty. That's called the godly soul. He, we have a natural urge, a natural certainty that I exist. That's called the animal soul. And then we have in the middle what's called an intellectual certainty. An intellectual certainty. I'm sure that there's such a thing as ideas and it loves ideas. That's the intellectual soul. That's a human being. But by a Jew, it's a little bit different. A Jew, his intellectual soul, his intellect has a, a how do you say, a drawing, appreciation to God. There's a little hole over there that it wants godliness. It wants, it knows that all the definitions of God that are given by all the other religions and by philosophy and this, they're wrong. <clears throat> if, if, it has this feeling that God is really real. Therefore, you can find a lot of times there are Jews that are um, totally non-religious and that they believe very strongly in God, very strongly in God. And, and, and sometimes not in the way, like we said, he prays to God for his success to do something bad. There's jokes about it. The lady comes to her friend and says, uh, my son is going crazy, he's doing Torah He's doing these mitzvahs. He's doing. He doesn't want to eat what we eat. He doesn't drive on Shabbat. He prays three times a day. Her friend says, "Listen, I think you should check your mezuzahs." <laughs> In other words, he knows that, 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 that mezuzah is a good thing and it guards and it's a godly thing. And the person really believes in God. And we find examples of, of Jews that are totally against it. And all of a sudden, the last moment, they wake up and. 
There's a story with the, with the Rebbe's father, that when the Rebbe's father in Yachatanislav, the Rebbe's father, Rev. Lev Yitzchak, he was a, a, a very great genius, a Torah genius, and he was a really powerful rabbi, but he was also a very, um, uh, how do you say, a human person. And he could explain all of his, his values, and he lived according to his values. <clears throat> the place where he was, Yaakov Tereslav, was a big center of non-religious Jews. Big center of all sorts of different non-religious Jews, of Bundists and, and communists and, and Zionists, and all these people that were totally against religion. And one of them, who was, unfortunately I forgot, he met the Rebbe, his father, and he just fell in love with him. He said, this is a genuine person. And he was a non-religious person himself. He didn't, but he realized this is a godly person. This is a godly person. And he fought for him. He gave him advice. He gave the Rebbe advice what to do and how to get elected. And, and he, 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 he succeeded. He became elected. There were other people like that. Doesn't the Baal Shem Tov always show appreciation for the simple Jew? That's what we're talking yes, about? Yes, that's right, the simple Jew. And the simple Jew, as, as time went on, he became not so simple. Right? It became not so simple. There were people that were geniuses and everything like that, and they went against the Torah and mitzvahs, but against the Rebbe they couldn't go against. Or there was one mitzvah or whatever, or to go really against Judaism they couldn't. But they didn't... Uh... It was, they had this Jewish feeling inside of them. They had this feeling of God that's not a religious feeling. It's a, it's a wholesome feeling of the Creator that's creating everything. To put that into Torah and to mitzvahs, it just didn't ring with them. So that's what the Rebbe said. That's the intellectual soul. The intellectual soul can connect between the godly soul and the natural soul. But sometimes it's bypassed. Like in these examples, right? Ask one of these people, I I don't understand. You believe in God. You're helping the Rebbe. Why don't you yourself do Torah and mitzvahs? That was my question yesterday. Right. The intellectual soul doesn't work. It, there's all sorts of different combinations and permeations how it is that the godly soul affects the animal soul. But ideally, it's supposed to be that God is one. That, that's the fact. God is creating the whole thing. He's creating everything. But He's creating everything in such a way that we should see the miracle in everything from our own free will. Because the big, biggest miracle of all is our own free will. That's the biggest miracle. Right? That God gives us this thing called free will. We can do whatever we want to. It's an amazing miracle. And that we should see this miracle in the fact that we can go against God if we want. Very, very beautiful. Professor Viktor Frankl also talks about this. Very interesting. I mean, he's, he himself is sort of an example of this. Very, not to talk about that now. Let's go. <clears throat> Says the Rebbe, how does the, let's, let's look at the mechanism. How does it work? The dynamics. <clears throat> how does this work? The godly soul is awareness of God. The intellectual soul is excitement about ideas. The animal soul is just excitement. The animal soul loves excitement. The natural soul, a person... Let's forget about the natural, uh, let's call it the nat- animal soul. The human, natural, it loves excitement, it loves something that excites it. But you see the advertisements, the bull- billboards, drink this, eat this, wear this, go here, what they see people, their hair is in the wind and they're driving on the motorcycle and, this, and they smell good and they look good and they're shining and they're wonderful and they're here and they're young and they're going and the, oh, people love it, right? That's what people have, excitement. So the godly soul loves God. And the intellectual soul loves ideas and gets excited about ideas. And the animal soul loves excitement. The animal soul, the natural soul, when it sees that the intellectual soul is excited about something, it feels the excitement, so it goes after it. It doesn't even understand what's excited about. But it gets excited, it goes after it. The excitement, oh, we see Hashem, like a tam or a kitov Hashem, taste and see that God is good. He tastes and he feels, the intellectual soul feels God is a good thing. God is a good thing. The animal soul can get excited about this because it loves excitement. Okay, let's take it from the last word of the line is bemuchash. 
the Muchash. We are on page 108. <clears throat> Again, this Mimer that is called Chaviv Adam. Yeah, Chaviv Adam. The last word in line is Bamuchash, and that's where we're. But the first word in the line is Mahuto. Again, this Mimer is Chaviv Adam. It's found in Tuf Shin Beit, or in English 1942, by the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. U 